Sure thing, Ryan. Disclaimer, this series revolves around criticising things, and the fact that I'm doing that doesn't necessarily mean I dislike the thing. Thank you. Click below to watch the original Sense video, or to buy Warcraft. There has been a war between orcs and humans for as long as can be remembered. Or as long as it's been since Tolkien created the orcs were blatantly stealing for this game movie. Actually, Tolkienian orcs are quite different, because they're just corrupted elves, whereas in Warcraft, the orcs are an entire species of their own. Also, Tolkien is essentially the daddy of modern fantasy. He is the source of a huge number of tropes within that genre. Claiming that something is ripping off Tolkien by using one of those tropes is akin to claiming that something is ripping off Star Wars because it features mad space battles with pew pew lasers. But in the beginning, how could we have known? Known what? You've given me three statements so far. Two about knowing and one about wondering how you could have known and already I think I see the problem with this movie. Oh jeez, Jeremy, I don't know. Maybe if you didn't cut out the one part of the narration that explicitly answers that question, you would know. Pregnant wife makes me imagine this couple's gross, gross orc sex, which probably involved the Fifty Shades of Warcraft sex manual. Remember guys, if you meet Jeremy and you're pregnant or have children, he believes that means he's obligated to imagine you having sex. Also, orc shaming. When we arrive, we will take them as fuel. Is this Warcraft or a greedy reboot of Monsters, Inc.? I mean, either way, I'm down. Oh, that was all just space travel, I guess? I mean, yeah. Well done? Yep, this is a title screen, which means you've learned all you need to know about these creatures in the last nine minutes, which is, in point of fact, hilariously untrue. Speaking of things that are hilariously untrue, the thing you just said. I mean, sure, we still have plenty of stuff to learn about orcs. But where is it written that a title card can only be placed after all of the important exposition is out of the way? Correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes don't movies have title cards before literally anything happens? In case you confused it for CGI City number 7. Also, even though you're giving us town names each time we see a new one, you're still not giving me any relative distance, which would greatly help me understand if any of these places are friend or foe. What? Hey, you know what else would help you understand whether or not these places are friend or foe? If we were to see people from both places collaborating on something and acting like their allies. It's a shame that that didn't literally just happen. Also, how would the distance help? That has no bearing on whether they're allies or not. And from what we've seen so far in this movie alone, it may have very little bearing even on how difficult it is to travel between them, because a huge amount of the transportation is done by teleportation and portals. It promises great power, but it exacts a terrible price. Cadgar made a big deal about how the Guardian needed to explain what this power was, but now that he has, I wonder why that asshole Cadgar couldn't have explained it. I mean, sure, they had to visit this guy, just not to explain this is what I'm saying. Medivh is by all accounts the expert, and as you said, they're going to visit him anyway. But why would you have him explain it to you when you could have it explained to you by someone much less experienced? Also, you know, just once I'd like to see great power cause absolutely no moral or physical problems. Well then, you're gonna love literally all the rest of the magic in this movie. Just in case you were sleeping through that whole summon the guardian bit from earlier because, like me, you were asleep, here's this. I'm sorry, did you say you were sleeping because you were asleep? That's not how reasons work. Or strangling. Just pointing out what's happening in front of you. Or throwing. Just pointing out what's happening in front of you again. I don't even get why this is a sin. It's a great way to contrast the strength of the orcs to the strength of the humans. You really get a sense of their size and strength from this. <laughs> orc helm scream. The one screaming there was not an orc. This kind of magic makes me wonder why the orcs are even still around to battle the humans at all. I mean, Jesus, that's Ark of the Covenant level magic. What do you mean it's a miracle that the orcs are still around? They literally just arrived. This is their first ever encounter with the orcs. Do you think they should have wiped the orcs out before they met them? <laughs> Utterly wasting your stories, dire wolves. I mean, we get a couple of good action scenes with them. Plus, it does seem necessary for them to exist in the first place because orcs seem like they would be too big to ride horses. So I don't know what you're saying here, really. I'm wondering why Goldan brought Paula Patton on this journey, other than the fact that she's Paula Patton. True, she's smart and fierce, but she's a worthless prisoner that impedes travel. And the only reason I can think of to bring her is so that she can help the humans out later. Hey, remember earlier when we saw the fact that she's one of the few people who's able to translate orc and human languages? I wonder why he brought her! Serious question, do you think Chris would notice if I stopped watching this and just made up the rest of my sins? Cause while I'm not gonna do that, I bet I could and he wouldn't notice. That's how stupid this movie is. You know what? I think he probably wouldn't notice the difference. Have you a name? Garona. She calls herself Garona. Okay, cool, but why do you answer the ruler on her behalf with a smile? He answered on her behalf because she wasn't answering. There was a pause there that you cut out. And the smile was because he's a person who has human emotions. Also, we put a map on our ceiling because we thought that was practical, and also we are not a smart race. Or you know, it could also just be aesthetics. Plus, the world's geography is probably something good for the king to memorize. So having it somewhere he sees it every day is probably a good idea. He will be a great chieftain. How the f*** do you know, lady? He's a goddamn newborn. 
Maybe he'll be a great whore denying stir, eh? You don't know. You're just saying you think you should say to make your orc man feel good about his worthless son. Worthless seems pretty harsh for someone who's only a couple of days old. I mean, really, what do you want him to have achieved by this point? But really, her confidence that he'll be a great chieftain comes from the fact that he's from a long line of great chieftains. Whether or not that belief is well-founded is another matter, but she does have a reason to believe it. Just as this movie is about to explain something, a dickhead opens a gate, and the Guardian turns into an eagle and flies out the skylight that I think is there in order to kill the vampires they keep overnight. Uh, Jeremy, a vampire would be fine if you left them in that cell overnight. You were thinking of daytime, the only other type of time. Remember when we would track blood dogs through the frost wind June? We're 40 minutes in and we've hardly warcrafted. They should change the name of this movie to Reminiscraft. Yeah, I didn't come here for story and characterization, damn it. I want to see an orc throw a horse across the woods again. Wait a second, you sinned it when that happened. Will you ever be happy? No, because that's your job. Dorotan is the only orc with the wherewithal to notice that Goldan's magic kills the life that surrounds it. No, he's the only one who notices who has the power to do anything about it. Even though it's extremely clear, that is how it draws its power. It's clear it draws its power from life if it's being done intentionally. What's less clear is that it just generally causes the land around it to die where it's used. A great gate. Nothing I'm looking at even looks like a gate, let alone a great gate. Really? Not even the gate that's been referred to throughout this entire movie as a gate and also we've seen used as a gate? Duratan told these guys to come when the sun was highest, but I'm guessing the cloud cover made that bullsh** way of telling time frustrating. Right, they should have just invented clocks. That would be much easier. This guy Jason borns his way through the battle because he's the main character, I think. The main non-human character, at least. I think. Whatever. He somehow has amazing airborne fighting skills and can take on multiple orcs who destroyed a whole world back home. The fact that they destroyed their world has no relevance here. They didn't destroy their world by being good fighters. They destroyed their world as a side effect of the magic they were using. This is like saying cows should be good in a fight because they fart so much and cause climate change. Or that humans should be good in a fight because we cause climate change. Oh yeah, you can punch me, but in 2100, huge populated areas of the world will be uninhabitable due to climate change. Take that. I win this fight. Also, you know, he's one of those orcs, so even if that did make them better at fighting, it would make him better at fighting as well. Do you see how that works? There's some kind of force field between him and his fighting son, and mostly I'm just wondering, what the f*** does he think he's doing? My son is in mortal danger and probably about to die, but I shouldn't try to help because I probably can't, so what's the point in trying? Do not make me take more innocent lives, young chieftain. Isn't their entire culture built around taking innocent lives? They literally suck the souls out of people to travel to a new world so they could murder everyone there too. He's talking about innocent orc lives, which are lives he clearly cares about much more than other kinds of life. Or, you know, he wouldn't be invading a new world and slaughtering all its people to try and save the orcs. You should have trusted in your chieftain. Orc and Doom Because Power's Thunder Dick was already taken, I guess. Also, wait, this dude's name is Doomhammer and he's not the chieftain? That's insane! If you have a cool name, that means you're the boss. Jeremy's flowchart of logic. No one beyond the Arch Council knows of its existence, and it will stay that way. Why did you even bother taking him in here to see it? Just because he had the page that said, Ask Aladai on it? The council thinks this guy is an unforgivable quitter, but that page apparently makes you forget all that. Geez, I don't know, Jeremy. Maybe if you didn't cut out the part where this is explained to you, you would know. Hadgar decides to trust this woman, even though she has a hint of green on her forehead, and this movie has done a pretty solid job teaching me what Ryan Reynolds already knows. That green is in her eyes, not on her forehead. Do you not know what... <laughs> I don't know how you could have got that wrong. Somehow, some way, this orc chick is allowed to visit this dude in his cell. I'd elaborate further, but I'm so f***ing over this movie, I'm trying to save time and be concise. This would never happen. Ah oh yeah, it's the old, yeah, there's loads of evidence to support my claim. It's just over there, where you can't see it. It exists, though, I promise. It's definitely real, definitely there. It, it exists. Can I show you the evidence? No. I mean, you know, the king has now clearly demonstrated that he wants to act more trustingly towards Garona, but what does that prove when stacked up against miscellaneous hypothetical evidence that probably doesn't exist? As annoyed as I am at this parent romance, this movie would improve dramatically if we could see a wild thrashing orc versus human sex scene right here. I mean, yeah, just go on and stick your dick through the bars of the prison cell. You are the son of Duratan and Draka. That baby is too young to remember lady. You're just saying this to pull the audience's heartstrings. F*** off. That baby's all goo goo gaga nipple right now. Or, you know, she could be saying it so that she herself gets closure. This screaming fan is correct, but it matters not, apparently. Cheating in the orc magic alt-verse will be tolerated. No, it won't. Three orcs try to step it to Gul'dan after he does that. He kills them, and then asks if anyone else wants to try. They don't try anything just yet, but his blatant disregard of orc traditions is what leads to his ultimate downfall. Oh yeah, the magical creature made of clay that isn't technically alive but can still battle is useless without its head. That makes perfect sense. Well, yeah, because that's where its eyes are. Even though there appear to still be a large number of orcs, the humans are still inexplicably winning this fight. Nope, they're not. They're retreating as fast as they can. Or killing me will make you a hero. Bring peace between orcs and humans. How? 
Just because she kills you and gets to survive because of it? How in the world is she supposed to rise to power to bring harmony between orcs and humans? And why would humans believe your story for that matter? Killing the king is something that Garona would get a huge amount of respect from the orcs for. The king's plan is for her to try and use the influence she would gain by doing that to foster peace between the humans and the orcs. <laughs> fucking weeks later, this baby is still totally alive and sh it's still floating down this river. And you know what? I'm fucking out, dude. Peace. Weeks later? I'm sorry, I must have missed the title card that said that because you made it up. So, the sin total so far is 43 cents, but, well, I don't think I've ever seen a single Cinema Sins video with more This Movie That Movies in it. So let's have a bonus round where we go through every sin that would fit into the This Movie That Movie category. And let's do it all without saying the words This Movie That Movie once, because I said I wasn't going to do that anymore. There has been a war between orcs and humans for as long as can be remembered. Or as long as it's been since Tolkien created the orcs were blatantly stealing for this game movie. This. Thing that thing. Jesus movie, John Carter much? Comparing things is fun. Whee! Is this Warcraft or a gritty reboot of Monsters, Inc.? People being used to fuel things. Wow, they're the same movie. I heard that Monsters, Inc. is actually exactly the same as The Matrix as well. This discount Avatar Guardians of Mars bull is already tired. Less than eight minutes in. I don't even know. In case you confused it for someplace real and not ripped off from Lord of the Rings. Fuck this movie in particular for using fantasy tropes. It's good to see the dwarves thriving in the Lonely Mountain again after cleaning up what must have been catastrophic piles of smog. Oh boy, that was two in a row. Those last two sins were back to back. It's a boom stick. Let me guess, you got it at S-Smart. Oh wow, three in a row. Those last three were back to back. Vulcan mind meld, meet your video game counterpart. This show, that game, that's actually a movie, Jeremy. It's the movie you're talking about. Do you not, do you not realize that? Discount Buckby. In other words, a griffin. Making a golem. Why not? You've ripped everything else off from those movies. Oh, you meant golem. Okay, carry on with not ripping off Lord of the Rings then. It's literally not even the same word, man. Also, Discount Gamora is named Garona because the subtlest differences in copycat movies are the best. She's the same color and her name is a bit similar. Ah! Show me where you come from. The Sistine maps. This movie, that thing in real life? Damn, Mario was laying waste to this entire map. And me. The Army of Darkness would have called to get its Necronomicon back, but the line was busy with similar requests from other movies. This. The shot with the volcano in the background? Yeah. Some unnecessary Zack Snyder bullshit right there. Movie! For a short while, which is still way too long, this movie turns into 300. That! I feel like they just took the Empire State Building shot from Independence Day and CGI'd a mountain into this thing and turned the frightened people into orcs. Movie! Yep, they just stole the orc music from Lord of the Rings. Just if you're keeping score at home for all the theft going on. You know what? Funnily enough, I actually am keeping score of all of the theft. Of my time. It only works on the simple-minded. Just like some Jedi mind tricks. Man, this movie rips off all the movies, doesn't it? Hey, I don't think you've done that many sins where you claim that Warcraft is just a ripoff of something else yet, so maybe you should do another one of those. It's the one thing this video is really lacking. Your clan was weak and you are a traitor. You wouldn't believe how much of this movie boils down to political posturing speeches. It's a lot. You wouldn't believe how much of this sin video boils down to this movie, that movie. It's literally almost two whole minutes. And it's crazy to think the thing that I said is actually true. I did not expect this movie to devolve into a CGI Rocky film, but at the same time, I'm not exactly surprised or anything. Ah, fuck it. This movie, that movie. So, the sin total was 64. Damn, that's high. And the punishment will be... Ah! I'm not great at thinking on my feet, and I had lip, but... Can, can you tell? Can you tell that that wasn't, you know, meticulously scripted by any chance? Anyway, other than that, before we go, it's time for a quickie review. Warcraft wasn't the kind of movie I was hoping it would be. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. Generally what I enjoy in fantasy movies of this ilk is the world building. And Warcraft didn't have a huge amount, but I can't really judge Warcraft on what it wasn't. I should really be judging it on what it was. And personally, what I think it was, was alright. I wouldn't go out my way to watch it again, but I certainly don't regret the time I spent watching it. Plus, it was fun to see things that I've seen in video games realised on the big screen. For those wondering, I've played Hearthstone and also WoW for about 30 minutes. So, you know, I'm not hugely into the Warcraft stuff, but I can appreciate the nods and references. One thing I do think the movie did really well was demonstrate how much bigger the orcs were than the humans. You may think that you can just demonstrate that by having them stand next to each other, and you can. That works, and is functional, but the way that this movie did it I think was a lot better. In every battle scene with the orcs, you really got a sense of their imposing size. And that can be hard to pull off. Other than that, as far as characters go, I really warmed to Juratan. The rest I could sort of take or leave, but Juratan I really liked. Also, there were scenes where the effects were stunning. I genuinely at points felt like I could reach out and touch the orcs. I mean, it wasn't consistently amazing, but when it was, I was really impressed. CGI characters often feel like they're not quite there, but in, say, this shot I've got on screen, he looks like he's fucking there. Those were just my thoughts, though. I'd love to know what you thought, especially if you've actually played the games. 
I've got a couple of prior commitments, so I might struggle to make three videos this week, but I'll give it my best shot. I'll definitely see you for a video next Wednesday, though. Other than that, hope you've enjoyed, and goodbye.